Hi everyone, my name is Liliana Diaz Vasquez, also known as Bilingual Speechy here on Instagram. I am so excited to be a part of this big EI event. I hope that a lot of you guys listening in to the presenters have learned a lot from all of these amazing SLPs. Um, I have some tips for you guys as well to share, um, but just a little brief um, background on, about myself so that you guys know um, who I am for those who are new to following me. Um, I am a bilingual speech language pathologist. I work in the school setting and I also work in early intervention. Um, I primarily work with bilingual families um, and I know earlier on I had asked a lot of my followers what they would prefer um, that I discuss or talk about for this um, EI event. And a lot of you guys said, um, you guys gave a lot of uh, input so the winning topic is all about interpreters. So I will be uh, talking to you guys about how to effectively work with an interpreter in early intervention. Now I know a lot of you um, either are bilingual and you do work with bilingual families and about half of you also um, are not bilingual and you have been in situations where you don't necessarily speak the language that the family speaks. Now, this is definitely a difficult situation to be in, um, especially because you probably start, you know, becoming concerned about the quality of your intervention. Um, so I'm gonna offer some tips today. I'm gonna keep it kind of brief um, because I will later kind of make a blog post about this specific to topic. Um, so that way I'm not running on throughout the story. You're not listening in for like an hour or something because I could go on and on and on about this topic. But um, I will be kind of talking about some main points um, for this specific topic. And some of the points are how to choose an interpreter, um, how to prepare before a session, tips for interacting with the family that you are working with, and tips for um, actually doing the therapy when you are working with an interpreter. And then lastly, just you know, some key points to remember after your session, um, after you have worked with an interpreter. Now, um, I am bilingual, I do speak Spanish, and I primarily work with families that speak Spanish. However, I have been in situations in early intervention where I had picked up clients that don't speak Spanish or English. They speak a whole other language that I do not speak. And let me just say, I know how it feels to be on that other side where um, you don't speak that language and you have to provide treatment or assessment um, or recommendations, whatever um, it is that you are doing. Um, and it's tough, it's definitely tough. But working in early intervention, we know that if um, you are provided with a family that doesn't speak um, the language that you speak, that um, by the law, the, the family should have access to an interpreter. Now, before actually getting an interpreter, you also want to make sure if maybe um, finding a, a service provider that speaks that language might be best for the family. Um, of course, always trying to find another speech pathologist that is aware about the culture and aware about the language and the assessment and treatment of that particular population is important. But that might not always be the case because as you guys know, it's really hard to find um, bilingual service providers for let's say a specific language at that specific moment that you might need um, uh, that uh, language or that um, SLP that speaks that language. So if you are in that situation and you cannot find someone, um, an interpreter will be the best route. Now, um, I would definitely get in contact with your service coordinator um, to ensure that you um, can receive a interpreter if you are working just in general. Um, and if not, if you're working through private practice, then it will probably most likely be your job to look for an interpreter. Now, some tips for choosing an interpreter. You always want to make sure that the interpreter that you are working with um, has a license or is certified. And this is really important because you just wanna make sure that that interpreter is providing adequate interpreting skills um, because it could definitely hinder 
the communication process overall. Um, if the person doesn't have experience um, or they just don't know the vocabulary, for example, that you are using with the, with the family. On another tip is ensuring confidentiality, making sure that the interpreter that you are working with is professional and understands that they have to keep um, just the information that you will be discussing confidential. Um, so that is also another uh, tip. And making sure that you discuss this with the family as well and letting, know the, um, letting the family know that everything that will be interpreted and everything that will be discussed between the interpreter, yourself, and the family is confidential. So making sure um, the family is aware. And also making sure that the interpreter um, has cultural awareness of the specific, um, let's say, culture that you are working with um, because it's there's a lot more than just to speaking a language. You also want to make sure that um, that interpreter is also culturally aware of the family's practices, beliefs, um, because once again, if the interpreter is not and you are not, this can definitely affect that relationship between you and the family. And it's just best practice to make sure that you yourself um, as the SLP are also just aware of that family's um, cultural beliefs and practices as well. Now, before the session, um, you definitely want to prepare um, and probably meet um, with the interpreter uh, prior to visiting the family, prior to the first session. Um, and this is really important too because you want to discuss um, basically your role as a speech language pathologist, what you will be doing. You also want to um, kind of ask questions and ask the interpreter whether they have um, interpreted for an, an SLP before, like what their experience is. Um, just because once again, if the interpreter is unfamiliar with therapy, speech language pathology in general, then this can definitely also uh, affect the quality of the interpretation. So any specific vocabulary that you will be using during the session that you know that you're probably going to repeat a lot, you also want to um, let the interpreter know, um, as well as the therapy and what you will be doing and just kind of having them prepped for the session as well so that they know what to expect. So um, that's really important. The next tip is um, tips for interacting with the family. Now this is a big one um, because right off the start, you want to introduce yourself to the family, introduce your role, and introduce the role of the interpreter as well. Um, and also when you are talking to the family, you wanna make sure that you're not talking to the interpreter and having your body completely turned to that interpreter, um, but that you're actually facing the family, making eye contact with the family to let them know that you are the main provider. They're, the interpreter just kind of serves as your voice. So ensuring that you are making eye contact is super important um, so that the family can build that trust and that relationship with you. Because um, I know it could definitely be hard when you have someone next to you who's doing all the talking. It's kind of like that barrier that's in front of you. Um, and not no offense to any interpreters, but um, it's just kind of like a barrier. It's a language barrier because um, you're, you're able to you know, communicate with the family. But by letting the family know that you, know, you are communicating with them, it just kind of builds that relationship as well. Um, also keeping in mind that when you are working with the family, you want to take pauses. Um, frequently when you are discussing any types of coaching tips, strategies um, during the intervention. Um, and this is just to ensure that you know the family is understanding um, everything that you are explaining via the interpreter. And also too, making sure that the interpreter is um, actively translating or interpreting um, everything you're saying because if you're talking too fast, it's possible that some information might get skipped or missed. So just making sure that you are pausing um, is also very important and making sure that you are letting the family ask questions. So a lot of the times that kind of gets lost through interpretation. You just kind of explain, 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 and just keep going and let the interpreter um, just, you know, interpret. 
but pausing and then asking the family if they have any questions is really important as well. And then the last um, important tip for the interaction with the family is remembering to make observations. So not look for non-verbal language, body gestures, facial expressions that the family might be making. Because I know a lot of the times you might not you know, catch what they're saying, um, but you could definitely read body language. So I'll give you an example. When I was working with a family who only spoke Arabic, I worked with um, an interpreter and a lot of the times I might have explained something and I'm looking at the mom and all of a sudden I see this kind of look of confusion on her face. Um, and that was kind of my cue to be like, oh, do you have a question? Does, does that make sense? And, and was that translated or interpreted correctly? Um, so just kind of clarifying that as well, making sure that um, you are looking for those facial expressions, those body gestures that the family might be um, making or using um, during the interaction between the interpreter and the family. So making sure you're constantly observing. Um, the next tip that I wanted to give you, and this is probably the one that you guys um, are probably more excited about um, hearing, is tips when uh, tips for working with the actual child in early intervention. So what do you do when the child doesn't speak the language that um, you speak and you have to provide the intervention? Um, so keeping in mind that if you work in early intervention, you know that the family's participation during the IFSP, during um, the referral process, the evaluation, the assessment, the intervention planning, the family is, should be 100% involved. EI is all about family-centered services. Now, where am I going with this? If everything is family-centered, that means that that family, those parents should be actively involved in your session as well. So in reality, you should just be almost coaching the family and the family's doing more of the interactions in their language with the child. So an example of this would be um, a lot of times when I work with my um, EI clients, I incorporate um, the therapy into their everyday routines. Um, so if let's say routines such as like cleaning, to, uh, brushing their teeth, uh, snack time, play time, these are all different routines that I may kind of jump into um, and coach the parents along the way. Now, if I am coaching during these routines, guess who's doing most of the talking? the parent and the parent is actually doing all of the communication with the child in that specific language and of course you have your interpreter is there, there as well kind of you know giving you each playback like what the child just said was that a true word um how many words was that is that one word two words um but the parent it's important to use the parents during those um interactions it makes it a lot easier on you since um if you don't speak that language um, it makes it a lot easier um, to do the intervention if the parent is actively participating and actively um, just you know communicating with their child as you're coaching. Um, so that is my biggest tip when working with, let's say, children that don't necessarily speak the language that you speak. Um, and then lastly, after the session, um, here's another big tip. Um, I would like, I often would um, discuss kind of the outcomes of the session um, with the interpreter. So after I would leave the session, I would leave with the interpreter and just kind of reflect on the session and what they thought and what I thought and just kind of compare um, our two observations. And the reason why is because let's say I noticed that the child did this. I'm like, oh yeah, you know, the child did really good, you know, putting uh, two words together uh, during the session. And, the, and I really like how the child did this. Um, and let's say the interpreter actually says, well, no, that wasn't really two words. That was 
one word or the child didn't really um, you know say a word in that moment um, it, it was just jargon for example now you can compare what you saw um, and then what the interpreter saw and kind of you know analyze that information compare and contrast the information to see whether you guys are on the same page or to uh, maybe kind of discuss whether you need to slow down during your the intervention maybe the translator translator missed something that you might have explained during um, the therapy so that's why it's also really important to um, debrief after the session as well now these are all the tips for today um, please let me know if you guys have any questions um, like i said i will most likely um, be turning this all into a blog post so that you guys could later on reference all of the information that i said um, and like i said you guys can definitely follow me on bilingual speechy and send me any messages if you guys have any questions about any of the information that i gave today bye guys